Um, this is a poem I wrote um, for upcoming Mother's Day, a mother's jewelry box. <clears throat> Among my diamonds, pearls, and gold are trinkets, treasures, and memories of old. There is no value but what I can place on a mixed collection of glass, paper, ribbon, and lace. Baby teeth lost, butterfly wings found, double-capped acorns picked up from the ground, a ribbon-tied lock of, that glimmers and shines, a golden hair from a sweet babe of mine, a bird feather, seashells, smooth pieces of glass, whispers of the ocean and little bare feet from the past, ticket stubs, phone numbers, a note from the heart, pearls of wisdom a friend took time to impart. All these things in a mother's jewelry box that show valuable gems only she can know. Royalty would be honored to wear these jewels of mine, for they are truly treasures, treasures of time. In the mirror, a woman adorned I see, wearing these jewels looking back at me. Priceless, irreplaceable, invaluable is she, the true definition of royalty. It is so, we are queens, for in the end, we are crowned wife, mother, sister, and friend. All right read three of my poems, but first I'd like to say that I feel blessed to have grown up in a very rural area in upstate New York and very poor, and before TV had, you know, we only had, when we had a functional TV, we got maybe three channels. So that kept us in books. My mother was an avid reader. She discovered the poet James Whitcomb Riley and would read to us. I chose favorite poems and began memorizing them. And I feel like that kind of set the groundwork for my reading. Um, another thing I discovered is I do, I'm very interested in genealogy, family history. And I, as I learn about these people, uh, one was my father's cousin. I think he was born in 1922, served in World War II, was a, pi a pilot when I discovered that he was a poet as well. And that was back when you had postcards made with either your picture or something you had written. And I'd like to read this one. Uh, his name was Dwayne Darwin Signor, and it's called Our Unfailing God. When the soul is weary with life's heavy heart load and so dark and dreary before lies the road, when almost despairing with naught of avail, Keep praying and trusting your God does not fail. <clears throat> when you feel so worn out with toil of the day <clears throat> and your mind is all doubt, so dim seems the way. To pray is so useless. The soul starts to wail. Just wait. When so helpless, your God will not fail. So whenever you're tired, nor no more can you do and it seems that you're mired no way to get through just cease all vain trying with efforts so frail rest on him relying your god does not fail i was just an absolute treasure um, I hope you have more than one copy. Oh, yes. Yeah, in case I lose that. Yeah. Um, next one I would like to read is... Um, this is about my brother. <clears throat> he saw a promise in the metal itself. Saw it had good frame. He pulled it out, took it home to repair, restore, and reclaim. Radio flyer, it said through dirt and grime, unmistakably he could see, and many a mile of childhood play was pressed within its seams. So we picked it from the garbage heap to look at it and see what an old rusted toy could become if he worked on it carefully. 
He treated it like a kind old friend, it so badly needed repair, and each toiling hour was a joy to him as he labored with loving care. To others it may be a piece of junk, but to him it was a work of art. Some time and tender patience now could give it a brand new start. The red wagon had seen many a better day, its body all rusted and stained. Three wheels were missing, but the handle still, at least, dauntlessly remained. It was meant to fly just like the wind in squealing childhood delight, so why not give an honest try to recapture one more flight? Steel wool and grease and loving care, new wheels and a luster shine, brought it right back to life. It traveled back in time. If we, like discarded toys, were thrown upon a heap, and a stranger came along and offered us such relief, would we not thank the hand who could provide a fresh new start to refurbish us as well, like a precious work of art? And could we place full trust in caring hands which love us so to bring us home, give us new life, and never let us go? Thank the one who knows us all and loves us so replete, even when our exhausted selves are in a crumpled heap, our weakened bolts, our missing parts, our flaking, tarnished frames, he recognizes from afar and lovingly reclaims. Oh, give us wheels to carry on, apply new coats of paint, restore our every weakened part, attentively without restraint. The master's hands are loving hands. He knows us and he cares. Instilled, inspired, new purpose now, for we are thus repaired. And that red wagon who his wife said, don't bring John Kong from the dump. We didn't know that after he refurbished it, and it was absolutely beautiful and wonderful, and his little daughter would, would, would ride it, and neighborhood kids would play, that he would die. And she's very grateful to have that in his memory. This next one is a friendly conversation, a duel of seasons. You like springtime when all nature comes alive testifying of new beginnings. I like autumn when that same life begins to say her goodbyes. You enjoy the colors of pink, yellow, and green, the blossoms new growth, a fresh new start. I enjoy the colors of gold, red, and orange when they fall to the ground, an expression of thanks as the trees give up, give up their leaves in the end. The scent of spring, new earth, fragrant blossoms, trimmed new blades of grass. The scent of fall, mature earth, crackling leaves, mellow and musty now. Your sun shines pale and new and warm to brighten the earth as she comes alive. My sun shines amber and warm to showcase the final stages of earth's glory just before she begins her rest. In spring, you say, I do not need this sweater. I'm warm enough. In fall, I say, I'd better bring my sweater. There is a chill in the air. Spring breezes sway soft meadows as birds build their nests. Autumn breezes tumbling by as birds gather to plan their retreat. In springtime, the earth is soft and moist and full of potential, ready for new planting. In autumn, the earth yields her fruits, and now she crunches and snaps in dry desolation. Spring says, hello, here I am. I have returned for you. Fall says, thank you. I bid you farewell, and I shall see you again, for soon I slumber. Two seasons of the earth, both glorious and unique, meant to be enjoyed and savored by all. Each season brings beauty, God's gift to everyone. And one last 
one, I had the opportunity to visit a dear sweet lady who was my elementary school librarian who inspired me. I went to visit her, um, found her number, told her I was coming, and would I, could, could I come and see her? It was autumn. And just as she opened the door to welcome me, the leaves just swirled and flew. And on the, the wall of this beautiful old, old restored home she lived in were um, grapevines. <clears throat> Welcome fall, please enter here as fragrant winds come circling near, gathering leaves and setting low, nature's greatest colorful show. Earth has gained what tree has lost and morning air is crisp with frost. Then later sun brings crackling heat to touch and warm the face and feet. Let us gather and drink the wine of autumn's purple fruitful vine. So stay a while, my trusted friend. May this sweet season never end. For we rel relish warmth and sun and light. Stay till winter earns the right to settle in his wicked chill when all goes dark and cold and still. Welcome fall, come right in on leafy breeze and twirling wind as apples bows its heavy yield with silent mist on pond and field. The brightest days you usher in, too soon to change to winter wind.